so the assignment is to talk on mentorship for this first episode so it creates the bedrock upon which everything else will be doing the next couple of months on does that make any sense because if we keep coming to be mentored and don't understand what it means to be mentored then we can't take full advantage of mentorship right if the goal is to be mentored on this platform and we don't understand what mentorship is then we may abuse the access for mentorship so that's why i agreed with the team when they said we should begin on the subject of mentorship mentorship is an asset that is designed to propel you towards a desired future it's an asset it has the capacity to propel you towards anything that you desire in your future it's one of the most priceless assets that's available to us that comes literally for free and i hope you understand that in the context of life nothing is completely free not even your salvation you, you know what i'm saying uh -huh. it's like i have a free shoe for you but you must come to abuja to pick it up so eventually you will end up paying ten thousand to transport yourself to abuja so even though the shoe is free but the it is a cost to it that you must apply to attain it does that make any sense so when you hear free in life understand that in the actual sense of life the dynamics of life does not allow anything to be completely free nothing even when we say that ah, god bless me with a child free of charge eh, it's free but you will carry that child for nine months you will pay a price you know what i'm saying but the price that you are paying may appear so insignificant compared to the virtue that you are receiving so we consider it free do you get now so mentorship is one of those assets that is available to you for propelling you to any desired future but that asset can only be activated by two realities and i want to use those two realities as the foundation upon which we enter this discussion I told the team yesterday night while we are arranging this place that there's a very high likelihood that we will not go to half of this note so just let's just try okay two vehicles and the two vehicles is captured in the opening line which is the leading follower the leading follower may sound like a phrase but in that phrase contains two very strong powerful realities and it makes no sense to say that how can a follower be leading does that make any sense if the person is a follower how can you say that he or she is a leading follower but upon this is where you can make extractions on the assets of mentorship if you can't unlock and unravel this reality of a leading follower you can't make anything of mentorship everybody in this room if i asked you now may find yourself in one of two realities in your mind you may assume that you are either a leader or you may assume that you are a follower am i correct and when we have books written on leadership there is usually that category that there are two categories there are those who are leading and there are those who are following and then when we begin to describe the leaders in that description we make it seem as though one of the fundamental nature of a leader is an influencer am i correct a person who has the capacity to influence others is categorized as a leader and as much as that sounds scientific it may not be completely true because a leader may be able to influence but not all influencers are leaders a leader may have the capacity the ability the opportunity maybe even an awarded platform 
because you can be appointed a leader. Once you are appointed into the, 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 the role of leadership, you automatically wield some sense of influence. But being an influencer does not categorize you as a leader. Excuse me, sir. Because if we think that influencing equals leadership, then you may say that being a parent equals parenting. Let me say that again. If we assume that influencing qualifies you as a leader, it means that we are also assuming that being a parent means that you are parenting. And you know that the second part of that statement is not true. That you are a parent does not mean that you are parenting. You know, to be a parent is just to give woman belly. Hmm? If you can give woman belly and you can carry belly, when the child comes, what do you become? Does that qualify you to parent? Are you seeing that now? That something you engaged unraveled a reality does not qualify you into a cadre of leadership. Because you were voted into the office does not mean you qualify for the office. That's what I'm saying to you. So leaders, yes, may have the ability to influence by nature, but influencing does not qualify anyone to become a leader. See, I'm still on the leading follower. Hmm. A leader that is only wired to lead is set up for corruption. Write it down now. Every leader in his or her maturity in the role of leadership must learn the science of following. Yeah. You cannot attain full leadership without your ability to follow. I feel in that now. A leader who is truly a leader, besides many other things, must learn to follow. You see, this is the foundation I'm trying to build for your need of mentorship. That before you need a mentor, you must understand what it means to be a leader and to be a follower. Because you will require both realities to actually drink from the pool of mentorship. You will need to embrace the reality of a leader and you must embrace the realities of a follower. And I'm saying to you that even as a leader, you must be a follower. A leader who cannot follow is a scam. You know why? Can I tell you why? It's very simple. I have a personal principle and the principle is that I do not sell what I cannot buy. Does that make any sense? If I can't buy it, I won't sell it. So for example, I don't drink alcohol. So because I don't drink alcohol, by my principle, I can't sell it. You know what I'm saying? Don't trust a man that is selling what he can buy. Any man that will talk you to buying something, first of all, ask him, Oga, have you used it before? You, are you using it? He said, no, 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 I don't, I don't use it, but you need it. No, sir, you that you are selling it. Oga, are you? <laughs> don't trust a man whether it's your pastor or your husband who says you must love me but you cannot love you are you seeing that now you want me to love you but you cannot love me eh? as he's toasting you he say eh, I, I'm a man that has great value for respect I, I saw my mother I saw my mother had incredible respect for my father I have great I have great attraction for respect uh, you have to ask him sir do you know how to respect because don't expect me to to buy from you what you are not willing to use yourself if you want me to respect you can you also give respect so a leader who is unwilling to follow because to be a leader you must have followers 
So if you are willing to lead followers, are you willing to follow a leader? Because what qualifies you to be trusted as a leader is that you are able to consume the very thing you want me to buy from you. If you want me to consume from the cup of followership, you can you drink from the cup of followership? So a leader who cannot follow is a scam. And we have many of them in politics, we have many of them in churches, we have many of them in marriages. You see the wife telling the husband, I just don't like the way you talk to me. Babe, you know, babe, you know what we met? I don't, I, you were not like this before. I don't like the way you talk to me. But have you checked the way you talk to him? You know, any point you want to make with a man that abuses his manhood is no point. You didn't get that. Women, you didn't get that. If you want to make a man, a, a man hear you, just make sure that in the equation of whatever you are saying, you do not abuse his manhood. Because at the point that you insult his manhood, everything you say is null and void. So as you are talking about the way he is talking to you, I mean, even the way you ask for food money, it's almost like you want to insult him. It's like saying waka. You know there's no food in the house, bar. Sure you know there's no food in the house, bar. As you are going out now, hope you know there's no food in the can you can you can you can you buy what you are trying to sell? Are you following me now? So what I'm saying to you is a principle that transcends just leadership as a role. Even as a parent, you will need to understand that to lead properly as a parent, you will need to follow as a parent. A trusted leader is a leader with the capacity to follow. So that's the easy part. The more complex part is the leading follower. Because followers follow but I do not trust a follower who only has the capacity to follow me Ebola. I can't trust you Aya. a follower that lacks the ability to lead will shortchange his or herself of their true potential If you must follow me, then you must show me the quality you have. Not just to follow, but to lead. Because in your following, you will need to apply leadership. I pray you get this thing now. <laughs> so even as a wife, when you say that I'm a submissive wife, there is a part of that submission that will require leadership. As a child, as part of a respectable child, Part of that will require leadership. As a staff, part of a, a, a desirable staff is that as you are staffing, you are leading. He said, eh, We are here, we are just, uh, we are just usher. So uh, the real people are like the protocol team, they are the, you know, in this office, uh, we are just, <laughs> we are just receptionists here. Oh. Uh, I'm not in the management team. See, in that office, as a cleaner, or a receptionist. If your following does not embrace leadership, you are a liability. Many years ago, I did a teaching called um, Add and Multiply, and I was teaching about the producers and the consumers. And I said that if you are a staff or you are a follower and you only do what you are told, you are a consumer. I can't work with people who are, who are only committed to doing the things that I tell them to do. We have some business owners here. He is a business owner. Helen is a business owner. And several of you here probably own businesses. You say, okay, um, tomorrow please let's um, clean the floor. Let's put the signage up there. Um, and then let's open the door by 10 a.m. And then you come in the morning and he or she cleans the floor, does all the other things you say she should do, and then, you know, you are done. And then he or she feels that I'm a good follower. I always do exactly what they say I should do. Now, take that staff, side by side, the staff that does all that three things 
and then by the time you come there, she say, ah, my, I just made a, a, a list of all the clients you'll be doing, you'll be meeting today. You didn't ask her to do that, but she took the initiative in leadership to solve a problem that you didn't instruct her to solve. Which one will you employ? You know, the parable of the master and the talent. He gave the talent to the people and he left. He didn't give them any, any, any instruction. You know that scripture? When he came back, there was one of them out of the three that followed the, the full understanding of the talent he received. Is that, Oga, give me money to hold. Eh? <laughs> Oga, Oga, what? Oga, give me money. This money, but I will bury it. Nothing can touch it. Me? Ah! I don't joke with Oga. No, no, no. I don't. Eh, Oga is a shrewd man. No, that's what he said. He told the Oga himself that me, I know you are a shrewd man. So I didn't want anything to happen to you. I buried it, sir. Eh! The work I did to bury your money. And he said, You are a stupid you. They did you something from the village. <laughs> your father sighed. <side. laughs> they did you something there. Meanwhile, that follower was a complete follower. That was his problem. The two other followers were able to implement leadership in their followership and took initiative to do what was prospected that was not spoken. Are you following that now? So, I hope it will not sound insulting if I suggest that a follower that lacks the capacity to lead is a tool and not an asset. I hope that's not insulting. Uh, and I will still explain what that means. You know, children of rich people do not fight over tools. Have you seen when the rich man dies? Then the children will be fighting for screwdriver. Have you seen that before? Yes. No, they don't fight for tools. They always fight for assets. Am I correct? Yes, and the follower that cannot provide leadership is a tool. And tools are important. Are you following me now? But tools are not transferable. Tools are not coveted. Tools cannot be assigned to future generations. Can you do that? You say, in my will, please put there the screwdriver and the spanner give to a maker. <laughs> do you do that? No. In the will, it's asset you will see. It's not asset you see. It's asset. A man holds assets close to his heart. The tools always remain at the realm of the hand. I am okay. Oh, this I'm saying is too deep. Assets are held close to where? The heart. Tools are only relevant in the hand. I'm asking you now, are you a tool or are you an asset? Because you will need to uncover those realities before you can begin to journey towards finding a mentor or using a mentor. You know, mentors are meant to be had and meant to be used. Oh, you don't know that? You will say that today. But you can't begin that journey until you begin to classify yourself as a leader and a follower. And you could say that I'm a following leader or you could say that I'm a leading follower. In any way you choose to say it, you are correct. You must either be a leading follower or you are what? A following leader. Because many of you, when you embrace mentorship, you embrace mentorship to escape leadership. And that's why you see a bunch of Christians that tells you everything their pastor says. My pastor said, my because they are just following followers. Does that make any sense at all? Mentorship is not required until a place is outgrown, outlived, identified to hinder, or 
it's a place there is a place to be desired it should be on the screen so you can, you can, you can, you can say it mentorship I'll say it again is not required until you have outgrown a place because I said in the beginning that mentorship is an asset that was propels you did you hear that so if you have not outgrown a place or outlived a place you may not need mentorship now some of you you are gallant where you are hey or Jeremy. you are master and lord lord superior eh? president general c in c commander in chief uh, but to 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 implement the asset of mentorship you must have outgrown a season follow it very carefully these words are chosen very carefully you must have outgrown a place or you've outlived it you know there are two different things when you outgrow something it speaks of size calopedi oh follow this thing now eh when you outgrow it show it means you your size you don't pass the place you know what I'm saying, right? That's why you don't wear your two-year-old shirt when you're 12. You've outgrown the shirt. Are you following that? There are some shirts that have been with you for five years, but you have not outgrown it yet. The one you bought five years ago, you know, the size, your size today now is like the same size. Five, am I correct? Uh -huh. So there are some things you have not outgrown, but you may have outlived. So you must know a place where you have outgrown. And you must also know places where you have outlived. Because there are places that you are doing very well at. But you have outlived it. <laughs> you are doing very well. Everything is smooth. Are you, are you following me now? But what you did not check is the calendar. Because in the faces of life, there are always calendars. And their seasons are located to where you ought to be per time. So even if it seems like the place is doing well, and it seems as though you have not outgrown it, but it may be possible that on the calendar of your life, you have outlived it. Three, four years ago, we began to embark, embark on some very huge investments that has put me under tremendous pressure. And my life was very peaceful before this investment, I'm telling you. My life was what? I, I was sleeping well. I know I was sleeping well. But I knew that I had lived a season. And if I had remained there, many things in my destiny could be corrupted. But as far as I was concerned, my life, me, I was in a good place. I was making millions every month. I was okay. But even though it didn't seem like I had outgrown it, I knew I had outlived it. So to qualify for mentorship, you must outgrow, you must outlive, and then you may also need to identify a hindrance. You may be in a place where you are battling with prolonged hindrance and you will need the asset of mentorship to pull you out of that hindrance. Are you following that now? So you may not need to leave the place you may not need to outgrow the place but you may need to conquer the hindrance in the place where you ought to be. So one of the assets and the tools and the weapons to fight hindrances is mentorship. You know why? Because many battles you are fighting had been fought before. <laughs> eh? the, listen, I know you don't believe me. You say, look, Ape, you don't understand what I'm going through. I live with that, live that thing. There are many things that are happening in your life that look like battles that have been fought before. There are people that understand the weapons required to destroy that enemy. Some of you are taking knives to a gunfight. There are mentors that will give you the right rifle to use.
to conquer battles. And what you have done, I know you heard that story before of a man who had a machine and the machine had a fault. Have you heard that story before? And he called like different people. He called people from America, from the East. He called different people to come and repair the machine and they all tried. And they couldn't repair the machine. All of them tried. Some two days, three days, one week, five days. They couldn't repair it. Then one man came. They called one man from one corner to come. He now came to check the machine. He now came like this. And did like this. He said, okay, try it now. <laughs> the man tried it. He came on. Ah! This thing I've been trying to do for three months. Nobody can repair it. It's okay, okay. Ah, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Please, how much do I pay you? The man said three million. Say, ah! You just came in two minutes. What am I paying you three million for? Ah, have conscience now. <laughs> you know the man's answer? He said, You are paying me three million for knowing where to hit. You spent three months. You didn't know where to touch. I came in two minutes. I knew where to touch. That's what they are paying for. They are mentors that know where to touch. And that thing you have been doing for four months, they will show you in two minutes. It will lock. That road you are trying to travel on, they have traveled on it before. They know where the gallops are. You can drive with them and off your headlamp. You will reach safely. Is this, is this making sense? So, a mentor will help you to conquer hindrances. Prolong hindrances. Maybe issues with your wife, your husband, your business, your school, whatever it is. They have told that part before. You know, when I was in school, people didn't like me so much. You know why? Because the same, this, it seemed like I was deceiving them, my friends. They say, ah, we hang out with Ape, he doesn't read at night, then during the exam, he will come top. Ape is lying to us, maybe he will leave us, go and hide to read at night. I said, I don't read at night. Because I had a simple principle. If you read from 6 a.m., 6 p.m., no, let's, let's, let's do it more student way. Favor, you know, student way. When people read normally, 10 p.m., 11. 12 midnight. When? When is the popular reading time that the thing will enter? That you feel like you are serious? Eh? 9 p.m. Till what time? 4 a.m. Till daybreak. You want to see 12? I can see from your dress now you like reading shorts. Till daybreak, what? Eh, uh -huh, this one. This is a guy. Like 10 p.m. They will not carry can do. They will carry socks. Carry water. Anointing oil, everything. <laughs> Do you feel Sunday music? Combine everything together. Then they go to class like this. 10 p.m. They do not read. The four or five. So, but where do you go at the class? Hi! With the class, they read. So, I had many friends like that. I didn't understand it. I said, ah, if he reads from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. Is it different from me who is reading from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m.? And I sleep very well. I, I will even watch a movie the night before the movie, the exam. I'll watch a movie now because if I read from 10 a.m. till 4 p.m., it's the same number of hours that you read from 10 p.m. to 4 a.m. And I'll be more agile. I will finish, I will stroll, drink Gary, watch one movie, then I won't sleep. But they felt I was unserious. But when the results come out, I'll be in the top five. Are you seeing that now? His mentorship will save your life. You know what I'm saying, right? Because that road you're trying to travel, that battle you're fighting, somebody has fought it, somebody has traveled it. Then I said, the last thing is that mentorship is required also when the place is desired. So you may be in a place that you may not have outlived, outgrown, but it's a place that you desire to be. Mentorship is one of the assets that is required to drive you there. 
But in that requirement of mentorship, there is also a demand of mentorship. Because mentorship will place demands on you. Like I said, mentorship may be a free asset, but does not come for free. Mentorship demands movement and mastery. Everything that drives me always drives me towards these two realities. The reality to consistently move and the reality to consistently master. Oh my God. Hmm? Is he entering? You see, movement is a science that if you don't respect it, you will die early. You know why? You are who you are by the reality of movement. The moment you deny movement, you die. Can I explain to you why? Everything that you are, biologically, is functioning by the prospects of movement. When you eat food and it does not move, you will choke. It is in the movement of the food through different organs of your body that you attain the virtues of that food. Am I correct? Uh, even your blood. The moment your blood stops moving, your heart stops pumping. Am I correct? The reason why your heart is pumping is so that your blood can move and circulate. You are a living being by the signs of movement. And your destiny will only survive also by the signs of what? Movement. And the mentor is useless until you are committed to move. If you need to stay in one place, you don't need a mentor now. You don't need a mentor. You see, oh yeah, my God, my God, my God. Let me explain to you. Early this year, God spoke to me and said that this year, stay with what stays. And when you hear God say things like stay, sometimes we think that it's, it means being immobile. Staying does not equal immobility. I, I follow that now. I could stay in a place, I could stay in a season, but there is still movement within that place and within that season. I may not move beyond what the season prov provides, but within the season, God will always require movement. Is that making sense at all? And then mastery. When we began to plan towards this hotel, um, my desire, my longing was mastery. How can we do a hotel, however small it is, that shows mastery? That shows something that's exceptional beyond the environment. I didn't want a hotel that looked like Makodi. Are you following me now? As you are here now, does it feel like you're Makodi? It's mastery now. You must try for mastery. Say, hey, no, I, I just want to open one small e tree. Oh, hey, oh God, even if it's under the tree, can you can you apply mastery? Because you can open a restaurant under the tree, but if I come there, we sense mastery. Are you following me now? If you come to my house, you will sense mastery. If you come to my toilet, you will sense mastery. I have always committed to the science of mastery. If it must be done, it must be done well. It is those that are committed to movement and mastery that qualify for mentorship. And you need to understand that it's the protege, write this down, that the protege is the one that makes the mentor. I know this looks like a contradiction because you're like, ah, I thought mentors are meant to make protege. How does protege now is the one that is now making the mentor? So let me have one person here. Please come. You know, this guy here, please stand here. Sorry. This gentleman here, may be my mentor but he will not be the one to come and say Ape, I want to mentor you it is what I do to him do with him 
and do for him that determines whether he's mentoring me or not. Did you get that? It's not necessarily what he does to me, does to me, or does for me. What I do to him, do with him, and do for him can determine if he is truly mentoring me. The prodigy is the one that has the first assignment of making a mentor for himself. It's not the mentor that will make you a protege first. You have to first make a mentor a mentor. Then you can feed off what the mentor provides and then become a protege to the mentor. You don't become a protege first. You create a mentor first. It is you that always creates mentorship, not the mentor. So people send me messages and emails, sir. Hey, can you mentor me? I don't understand that message. Because there are people that have mentored me for 10 years. They have no idea they are mentoring me. So I don't know why you have to chat me up to ask as though I have passcode. Do I have passcode? Am I giving that that number? You know what I'm saying? As though if you don't have a passcode, you cannot enter one room where you, I will mentor you. You can extract. I will teach you that now. You can extract virtue. You see, the woman with the issue of blood did not require to send email to Jesus to extract virtue. There is a heart with which you approach a person. You can draw. Even him may not even know. Jesus was fortunate that he knew that day. But you may not even know. So you may be mentoring me for eight years. You have no idea. Because sometimes I get mentored by observation. Oh, yeah. Many years ago, I was watching a preacher. And he was preaching. While he was preaching, I noticed that he was wearing a nicely starched dress or kaftan. But I could see all the lines of the kaftan, you know, the folding lines like this. I said, ah, I don't like this thing, no. And he's well ironed dress, but I can, I can see all the lines. And sometimes when you wear those dresses, they look very nice in person, but on camera, with all the light and everything else, it brings out every contour of the dress. So from there, I learned that I must still iron and stretch a laundried dress. So that man mentored me on how to wear what I wear. He had no idea. I see that now. The prodigy is the one that first makes the mentor. Always remember that. It's not the mentor that makes the prodigy. Even if the mentor comes to Lord leadership over you by desire or by decision, the real experience of mentorship is determined mostly by the prodigy. Does that make any sense? Please sit down. So it's the prodigy that makes the mentor. And this one I want to say now is very serious to you guys and to this generation because I'm not seeing a trend. The trend is as though it's like uh, to have a mentor nice a trophy. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> ah, me? Ah, Bishop James is my mentor. Ah! <laughs> and you don't look like his shoe. Ah, if I say you don't look like his character, I'm, I'm taking you too high. Even the shoe is, you, you don't even resemble his shoe. Say, ah, Bishop. Ah, he's my mentor. Ah, if I met him once, 1998, that it was at the airport you passed him. <laughs> at, the, at the airport, you want to pick your pastor. So you pass like this. You don't have to be sure pass like this. You say you met him. You didn't meet him, sir. You passed him. While he was waiting for his load, you now came and said, Sir, please, please, picture. Then you now post as my mentor. <laughs> oh. As a principal many years ago, even when I was very you know, young, I don't struggle to take picture with anyone who can't remember my name. I don't care who you are, whether you're Michael Jackson or whoever, I don't care. I will see you, I will greet you, I will pass you. Until we meet in a way that you can remember me, then we can snap. 
It's not enough to post a picture on Instagram that he doesn't know you, sir. My spiritual mentor, Bishop A and B. <laughs> you don't look like him. You don't smell like him. You don't talk like him. You are not moving in the same direction. How is he mentoring you, sir? So we have turned mentorship to a trophy. You know a trophy? A trophy is that thing you put on a shelf in your house. Let everybody see. That's what mentorship has become. So when you say, please, sir, I want to be your mentor, because you want to go and brag that uh, uh, one of my key mentors is Akhita He's my mentor, in fact, my mentor. No. Mentorship is not a trophy now. And mentorship does not define your pedigree. The kind of person you are is not always qualified that by the person you are calling mentor. And we're not using mentorship to define our pedigree. Like a trophy. So that's why I used to run away from all these people that were sending me a message, email. Please, sir, can you mentor me? If you want to be mentored, sir, please be mentored. Just mentor yourself. Eh? Be, the, be, be the one that makes the mentor of the mentor. So let's go deeper now. Mentorship. So you see, we're just at 20%. And I just have 20 minutes left. So let's just, God will help us. Mentorship is as a map. Uh, and this one, oh my God, E. Brombedi. Follow this carefully. Because I can't go beyond this level. I don't think so. We are just 20% of the notes. 20%. We're not even anywhere yet. But mentorship is what? It's as a map. I do not think that mentorship is as a vehicle. Hmm. There is a difference between a vehicle and a map. A vehicle can carry you, lift you, and drive you. You know, you can sit in the vehicle and be watching Netflix and it's driving you. Am I correct? But in a map, you must study the map and understand the possibilities therein. For example, a map can show you eight ways to battle her results. Am I correct? You will now study, you have to study the map to see which of the routes that the map is suggesting is worthy of your journey. The map does not carry you, the map directs you. You study the map and the map will always give you the prospect of routes. Hi, God, please like, get this thing now. Because this is even a principle that you need to learn when you follow Jesus. You don't understand what I'm saying? I should prove it to you. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. Wherever you are headed, it's so important that him became the way. You didn't get that. He is such a believer of journey that he didn't just give you a way. Him now became the road. A map will give you options of how to navigate routes to arriving at a desired location. That's why we said that if you want to qualify for mentorship, you must understand that you must outgrow, outlive, and you have a desired place to arrive. Did you hear that before? And when you now figure out that I want to be in Abuja, the next thing is that how do I? Then mentorship gives you a map. In that map, it will show you seven ways to arrive at Abuja. And if you study it carefully, you will now discover which is the right way. Mentorship does not give you one way. Aye. Your mentor may be a good teacher of the Bible, but he may be a bad husband. He will teach you how not to be a husband. You can learn how to be a good husband from a bad mentor. You're not going to understand. Because mentorship is a map. A mentor may not be the best husband, but if you study him carefully, you will see that this is not a way to be a husband. He shows you ways. Mentors will show you ways. It's a map. 
some of the roads on that map may not be desirable. But you will see from the map. That's the good thing about the map. You can see it before you start. Are you not following me now? You will see the map before you start the journey. So before you start, can you just take your time and understand what the map is showing you? A mentor may be broke. He's teaching you that poverty can kill. Learn from it. Hear that voice of wisdom from a poor mentor. If you want to be rich, you don't only really need rich mentors. Sometimes you need the poorest man to teach you the need to be rich. Your error is that you want to make money and you are finding rich men to mentor you. No, sir. No, sir. The mentor who is poor took the wrong turn. Mm. So when you want to join, he will say, Auntie, that left road, don't follow it. I followed it. It didn't end where? See me now. Eh? That's what his map is showing you. Some of you are looking for rich mentors who, eh, who have money. No, sometimes the best wisdom comes from a man that shows you a road you should not follow. The kind of wisdom you want to follow is not just the wisdom that tells you the right road to tread upon. Sometimes you want a man that tells you this one, this road, here, here, and here. Look at me now. Never follow it. If you want to know where it arrives, see me. If you sit down close enough with that man, he will tell you things that will save you of future trouble from the mistakes that he has made. Because mentorship is what? As a map. And the map of mentorship will help you to arrive. You know, we said that if you have a map, a map is when you are actually moving somewhere. If you don't plan to move, do you require a map? You don't need a map now. So map is needed by a man who is willing to journey. And where do you journey to? Destiny. The ultimate arrival point of every substantial journey is your destiny. But many of you don't even know what destiny really means. So I will use the next few minutes to teach you about what destiny looks like. There are two realities here. Destiny as a reality and the way. So I'm going to merge the two of them. Are you ready for that? Yes, destiny and look up carefully. You have the destiny of your life. You also have the destiny of your family. Am I correct? Yes, you have the destiny of your business. There are segments of destiny that makes the whole. Am I correct? Yes, so when I'm defining destiny, I want you to look at it from that perspective that these definitions apply to other parts of your life that have destinies. And I hope you understand that destiny is derived from a word called destination. So when you hear the word destiny, it simply points you that there is a, is a place. But the uniqueness of destiny, oh my God, is that it is a place with a clock. Hmm. There are places in your life that does not have a clock. They are called destination. Destiny is a combination of a place and a time. You can arrive a place too early and miss destiny. You can arrive a place too late and miss destiny. You came to the right place but you came too late or you came too early. You have missed destiny because destiny is a place that also works with time. But it's derived from the word destination. Destiny, in a way, is a form of a destination. But destination does not equal destiny. So destiny is a place, please follow this, because I, I, I will probably stop here. Destiny is a place where the fullness of your purpose, thank you, is attained. Mm -hmm. That one is easy. Isn't that easy? 
Destiny is a place where the fullness of your purpose is attained. But that's not the one that scares me. And I don't have the time to teach you about purpose. To understand how to unlock purpose. Maybe in our next session, we'll dig deeper into purpose. Is that okay? Because our churches have mystified purpose. They have made it too complex now. A purpose cannot be that... Uh, if you see a car, you know... Do uh, you uh, use car to wash plates? You know now, when you just see a car, you know that this car is meant to be driven. Am I correct? So why is it that your own purpose is so hard? Why do you need to read 18 books to know your purpose? I can't use this microphone to pick my teeth. I know that this thing is not toothpick. You... <laughs> <laughs> Let's leave that in. Destiny isn't just a place where your purpose is attained. Destiny is where hmm, fullness requires emptiness. The fullness of purpose requires you to be empty of potential. When you arrive destiny, you arrive at a place of fullness. But destiny is the only place that I know where the fullness that you experience must require emptiness. You can't arrive destiny with all your potential. That means you have not arrived yet. Because when you fully arrive at your destiny, you must have emptied yourself of all potential. All the books you should have written, you would have written it. All the songs you should have written, you should have written it. All the houses you should have built, you, should have, you have built it. Because when you arrive through destiny, you will arrive empty. Many of you, you arrive destiny very full. And God is wondering what happened. Are you following me now? Because when you truly arrive the fullness of your purpose, then you should be... See, the, the more you grow, the emptier you become. That's the way it should be. What I'm doing here this afternoon is emptying myself. I'm emptying a potential. Are you following me now? I can live up to 80 years old and never do this. And I will think I've arrived destiny. And God will say, Uncle, where are you going to? Eh? That's why when many people will get to the day of reckoning, God won't know them. Because you are looking different from the way he expected to see you. You came with like four bags. He said, ah, where can you? These bags were meant to have been dropped like 80 years ago. The other green bag you are carrying should have been dropped like 25 years ago. What? This thing you are holding it was meant to have been done when you were 15 years old. He said, ah, God, I brought you boxes. He said, you are a fool. Thou foolish servant. Because I expected you to be here empty. But we have taught you that you must acquire. As you are, as you are growing, you must acquire. No. The principle of divinity is that as you grow, you empty. This building is a process of me emptying a reality. I've, I've pulled out a reality from inside. Put it on the ground. I go to the next one. I put hand against side like this. I pull out another one. Drop it here. I, I know the things I need to remove in the next five years. I know them now already. It will come with pain and labor, but I know them. I'll pull them out. And I will look for the mentors that have the tools, the skill, the wisdom, the science to unlock that wealth. Pull it out. Does that make sense to you? And then, the other reality is of, of a map is just not the place, but also the journey. So, destiny is a reality that requires both the journey and the arrival. How you travel is as important as how you arrive as far as destiny is concerned. Many of you take the journey for granted. You always write about the place. You pray about the place. You prepare for the place. You write about the place. You dream about the place. But you don't wire yourself for the journey. But in destiny, the journey that brought you to the place is as important as the place you have arrived. Are you following that now? And that is why mentorship is required. Because the map, 
A map is a proof that there are paths, there are routes, there are places, there are ways, there are realities beyond where you are. So whatever you see in your life, there is more. And you don't have to go too far. Just unlock mentors. Maps are also proof. Hear this carefully. Maps are also proof that someone else has found the places, the realities, the locations, and someone has used those roads, paths, or routes. If you see a map to Makodi that shows three different roads, it means that somebody at some time has walked or traveled on those roads. Am I, am I, am I, am I saying something? I can't draw a map of a place I have never journeyed. Does that make any sense? If I can give you a map from how to live here to high level market, it means I have been to high level markets before. So any map that shows the road also shows you that the person that gave you the map has journeyed on that road before. Am I correct? So can I say that the map provides the sure way? Come on, say sure way. Sure. Say it again. Sure. Say it again. Sure. The sure way may be longer, may be shorter. But maps will tell you the sure way. Not the shortcut, but the shortcut. Do you hear me? Maps may not show you the shortcut, but it will show you the sure cut. Because you will know for sure that if I follow this map like this, this is exactly where to take me to. You will know. Because maps provide you with sure ways. Many years ago, we used to drive through um, when you're going to Jaws, you go through um, Bardi. Hmm? This place called Bardi. When you get to Kefi, you turn left. You go to Jaws through Bardi. And the road through Bardi from, a, from, from Kefi is shorter if you're going to Jaws. I don't know if you know Jaws. Now, many of us don't follow the Bardi road anymore. We now use Akwanga. Am I correct? From Abuja. Akwanga is longer to get to Joss, Bardi is way shorter. But those who have journeyed along the Bardi road have told us that there's a lot of kidnapping on that road now. Eh? It's a shorter road, but it's not safe. There are many roads to your future that are shorter. But if you watch carefully and you hear carefully, you will realize that that road that is shorter is not safe. And for the health of the future, you may need to follow a longer road. <laughs> Did you get that? I know you want shortcuts. Hey, Nigerians, you like shortcuts. You want shortcuts to marriage. Say, I, want, sir, I like the man to have six pack. I want six pack. I'll be packing your loot as you married him. <laughs> eh? Every month, as he has six pack, he will say, pack out six times. I want, you want shortcuts. I want, you want shortcuts. You are saying, I love that girl. You don't love the girl. Her father has money. That's what you want. It's a father, it's a father that has money. It's shortcuts you are looking for. Shortcuts. <laughs> ah, sir, please. I want you to be my mentor. I've been following you for eight years now. I, 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 I watch all your videos online. When I say, okay, well, God bless you very much. The one you say, God bless you, have bought trouble. That's your reply. Oh, thank you for your feedback. I'm so grateful. Thank you. Next thing you hear is that, sir, please, uh, I don't know. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> actually, two times. It's a bad sign. Actually, actually. My, my mother lives in Anambra and she has not been feeling well. I was planning to go and see my mother. Um, transport is 85,000. I have only 6,000. <laughs> you say you have been following me for five years. My first response, your feedback is money because it's a shortcut you're looking for. 
And if your motive is shortcut, you can never drink from the wells of mentorship. My time is up, so let me say this quickly before I drop the mic. A mentor may not have what it takes to point to you. A mentor may not even have the time it takes to point to you. A mentor may not even like you enough to point to you. You're not following this thing, no. Elisha was fooling Elijah. <laughs> Elisha left his family on his own to follow who? Elijah. Elijah had what Elisha needed. Every chance Elijah got, he tried to discourage Elisha from following him. Did you follow that story, Ba? Okay, just go where you are going now. Let me follow you in peace. Can you just allow me to? He said, No, just go back. Go back. He said, I don't want to go back. He said, Go and do. Go and. He said, I don't want to go back, sir. Just leave me alone. Because the mentor had no interest in pouring into the mentee. As Elisha did, sometimes you may be the one to aggressively draw out of your mentor. And I wish I had the time to teach you how to do that. The man that had the anointing told the follower, go back. Do you know what that means? That you're trying to serve somebody. You lost somebody. You left your family for somebody. Then the person you left your family for is telling you that, go back. If it's you, ah, Instagram will hear it. You just write those coded insults. Pride goes before a fall. That your anointed does not make you God. <laughs> you just want to find one photocopy of Elijah and follow him. Elijah and follow him. Eh? Is it you? Is it is it only you that have anointing? What God cannot do. <laughs> You go just provoke. Meanwhile, you didn't know that the future that you desire is locked up in the man that provoked you. And you will need to develop a science within which you can draw from a man that dislikes you. And what I'm saying to you, maybe your pastor, maybe your boss, maybe your husband, maybe your wife, Maybe your step brother. There is something that your destiny is calling for. And you must decide to draw it out, even if he's not willing to pour it out. I was going to teach you the rules of mentorship, what a mentor should do at the time. But part of the job of a mentor is to pour. But most mentors do not pour. In fact, sadly so, many mentors take from you. And you need to now culture yourself with the wisdom that is required to harvest virtue from a man that is willing to give it. And sometimes the wisdom that you drink from the man by drawing is stronger than the one he will say to you with his words. Because you understand how to draw virtue from the well of mentorship. Thank you very much, Ben.